Hi there folks, my name's Novawing24 and welcome to another in our episode... Blah. Hi there folks, my name's Novawing24 and welcome to another episode in our Microsoft Flight Simulator preview series. Now this one, there's... Okay, sorry to be the pair of bad news, this is not going to be a lot of flying in this one, but I really wanted to showcase something that I find really cool and really important and something that has been long overdue in our mainstream flight sims. Um, pr previously, to do what I'm going to show you today, you had to use third-party software, whether that be FSUIPC, the paid version, or uh, SPAD Next, or something else like that. This is something that is now built into the sim. Um, it doesn't maybe quite have the degree, like those programs are still going to be important for other reasons. But some of the fundamentals that I know the, the, the main reason why I purchased uh, FSU IPC, uh, the paid edition back in the many, many, many moons ago, uh, was to do what I can now do natively in this sim. And that's binding multiple things to the same controller. So let's have a look at doing that one today. Now to do that, we go up to our options here and we go over to controls. Now, on the surface of it, it's fairly obvious. You have a listing, but actually also, it also goes to show how far Microsoft have come from the days of FSX and definitely from the days of, uh, and, and contrasting with uh, Lockheed Martin and Prepared. So the first thing you have is you have your list of controllers over here on the left here. So we are, for me, I've got, you know, I've got my Xbox controller, I've got a keyboard, mouse, um, what also is cool is that it actually gives you an image if for the most as long as it knows what it is and It's fairly common. It'll actually give you an image of what it is. Unfortunately, there's none for my DSP controller um, But it'll go through and point out and let you know what buttons are what which is uh, something that is incredibly important And I know X-Plane does this as well, but it was sort of it's still a fairly new thing for a lot of us um, so it shows you what it is and says, okay, so this is, you know, so for example, the left, the switch on the outside left of my left throttle is going to be position 13, position 14. Okay, cool. Awesome. Um, the one thing it doesn't do is it doesn't do, if I click it, it doesn't highlight it. That That is something that I'd like. Um, the first thing that I want to show off here is I want to show off these profiles. So by default, when you um, load in a new controller, it'll just load in what... Uh, it, especially if it's a common controller, it'll go in what it believes it should have and just go, that's default. So let's, for example, here with default with Hotaz Warthog, um, your throttle is bound to, it's actually the, the right axis is what it is, the right throttle axis. Um, but it's just, you know, it's all throttles. So if you want to change that, you don't actually change the default. You actually, it actually forces you to save it as a new one. So you can either duplicate um, and create a new one from that or as soon as you go to try and change it it says okay you're changing the default so we're gonna get you to create a new profile now for me what I've done here is I've got a couple of different ones over here so this is the first one I was first mucking around with it I was just doing a couple of changes nothing really changed too much the only thing I did was I made it ready for for a four engine aircraft so I've set my engines one and two to be my left throttle and three and four to be my right throttle that's all I did but then I got dip, digging around a bit more and I went, okay, so let's do things like my GA aircraft. So for example, what I do with my GA aircraft, my GA aircraft, I've set them to uh, be the mixture axis is my little slider on down here, or down there, my little mixture slider. I then have my prop axis is delivered off my left stick throttle and then my um, right uh, throttle axis is my actual throttle. So. This is the, this is a really cool kind of thing, and then you can change profiles to simply go, okay, that's cool. And then if we switch over to my turboprop aircraft profile, for example, okay, so I have my left and right throttles control left and right engines. Uh, my mixture axis is on the right on the on the on the right there, and I don't have anything set for prop pitch, so I have to manually do that myself. But I have a toggle here because a lot of my turboprop aircraft have re reverse thrust, where I have a little press button where if I press that then my throttles then become reversed and actually can then control reverse thrust. So this is so, such cool. And the fact that it has these profiles built into the sim is a huge step change for Microsoft and something that I know was being asked for back from when Dovetail was making Flight Sim World. It was very much asked for there and we never got it. And this is a huge first step that Microsoft, real demonstration that Microsoft is listening to the community and what community wants out of the box. 
Um, now, the thing that I was actually wanting to show you guys today, which is, which is something we want to show, I was going to switch back to my... Uh, I'm just going to drop down my GA profile for this one. Okay. Um, now, you might notice that... Okay, it seems like... Oh, oh, but Nova, where are all the other things for that? Okay, this is because I'm currently only showing assigned controls. What I can switch to is I can get into essentials. So, so are there any things that, that Microsoft consider to be essential for controlling your aircraft, for controlling your flight? Or we can go to all. So we can see that, you know, you can set up all your different mixtures, everything else, and there's just so many variables, it's not funny. Um, and now, to be fair, a lot of these variables were in, um, I mean, they, they were in the original, you know, the old legacy sims. However, there are a lot, new, a lot of new ones as well. All right. The other thing that you can do here is you can also search. So you can search by name. As I said, you can't search by controller activated, which is a bit annoying. I hope to see that coming in the future at some point. Uh, actually, there you go. I tell I made a liar of myself. There you go. You can search by input. So if I press an input, so if I go my, let's go and search by input. Uh, okay, so there's nothing, oh, there's nothing on that GA slider for that one. Okay, that's, there you go. Uh, let's do, uh, let's try instead, um, search by input, there you go, okay, press, I press the button, my, uh, landing gear button, bang, there it is, done. There you go, thanks Microsoft, you've got the other thing that we all really wanted, that's awesome, search by input or by name, right, awesome. Um, let's now show you, I want to show you this, now this is something that I've been asking for, and I know a lot of community been asking for, and I use to some degree in my other sims is being able to assign multiple simulator events to a same controller now i'm just going to use an example not necessarily a a you know an, an example that you might use but this is something that i really really wanted to show off so let's have a look at this one for example so let's go to look at autopilot okay so let's go to autopilot so it's so it's using our search by name search for autopilot now I want to be able to, let's say for example, I want to toggle my autopilot on and on, uh, on and off. So we're going to go to look for or toggle autopilots, uh, toggle, toggle autopilot master. Okay. So this is how you get to sign, uh, uh, assign a key. So we go to scan input and then we press it. There we go. So joystick button 26 for me is the autopilot engage, disengage on a, on a hotel's warthog. Once you've selected the input that you want, you then go validate, and there it is. Now let's say, for example, that every time I hit the autopilot master button, I want to know that it is also going to hit uh, autopilot nav select at the same time. So I, I, I want to do both of those commands simultaneously every time. So what we do here is we go to set autopilot nav select. So we select that, we go scan for input, and I press that button again. Now, it will give me a prompt and say, this is already used somewhere else and it'll list what it is, great. Do you want to bind it anyway? And you go validate. So now you can see that I have that one keystroke bind bound to both events. That is a huge thing. Now it may, it may sound silly, may, but you may sort of uh, think where you use it, but trust me, if you spend enough time and do enough keyboard commands, especially with switches, you will find ways to where, where this will be useful. You think about the workflows you have in the cockpit. Trust me, you will find a, a use for this one. So that's as I said, I really want to show that off. Now let's uh, to see also as well. So let's clear that out and let's go by search by input. I just want to see if this works actually now. So let's go, we've got search by input, press the input button and there it is, it works. As I said, I really wanted to show that off to you guys because that's a feature that I think is incredibly useful um, and you may not find a use for it straight away, but as you develop your workflows as a virtual aviator, virtual pilot, you're going to find more and more places to find use for this. You really genuinely will. Uh, okay, once you've done mucking around with all your changes and everything that you want to do, you then click on apply and save, and that's done. And then you can go back to your main menu from there. So there you go. While we're here, probably might be a good idea let's have a look at the rest of the options menu here quickly today as i said I, that was the thing i really want to showcase here you but while we're here let's have a look at some other stuff as well all right so assistance assistance is sort of um you've got a couple of different things that you can do so you can do a sort of uh, catch all one we can go all assists you know so uh, middle ground true to life so you can just click those and that's just simply along here and off you go 
Otherwise, you can go through a bit more detail. A lot of these are going to feel very, very familiar to anybody who's been playing any of the ESP Sims over the last 20 years, because pretty much they're all the same here. Uh, so things like auto mixture, on or off, unlimited fuel, on or off, aircraft lights, automatic, air gyro drift, automatic, uh, dealt with, stuff like that, that's fine. Uh, failures and damage, again, exactly the same. The new one is, of course, icing effects. Now, icing effects is interesting because you can choose to either have them um, visual only or on. So you can't turn them off. You actually can't turn them off. So you can have them just on as a visual effect so that they, you see the ice accumulate on your aircraft, but it doesn't affect how the aircraft flies. I have it set to on, and uh, in the video that I do with the King Air uh, on climb out, I noticed it got really sluggish when, and my wings got heavy, when I got accumulated the ice on it. And I thought that the icing system, the icing system wasn't working, it turned out it was, it made a liar of me. So there you go. Uh, navigation aid, so this is how it appears in sim as well. So this isn't how it is on, on the, um, necessarily so much on the, the maps, it's how it appears in sim. So I, for example, I have my taxi ribbon on. Do I want to see a visualization of my route and waypoints in the sky while I'm flying? I can turn it on or off. A landing path, which you'll see in some of my videos. Um, you can show that for your best approach. Smart cam, how you want the smart cam system to work. Um, I, you know, will the auto camera, the camera automatically look at something nearby if you're interested in it. Um, I have that off because it doesn't really interest me. Point of interest markers. This reminds me, these three here remind me of uh, Aerofly FS2 when it first came out when you sort of have these random uh, labels over cities and suburbs and stuff like that. But you can turn, as I said, you can turn them on and off if you want to do. Fauna markers, I've let this turn on because I'm, because it's one of the things we saw in the video. I still haven't actually seen any like flocks of birds yet. I'm looking forward to seeing when I see my first one. Don't know if they're in the, uh, in the preview version or not, but it's going to be something we're going to be on a quest for in our future videos. And again, going through the rest of them, notification systems, um, on, off, software tips, flying tips, again, very, very basic stuff um, that, again, if you've been flying user sims for a while, you would have found. And user experience here, um, does your ATC panel open up ATC voices, uh, checklist panel, stuff like that. So this is all whether they open as soon as you log in or whether you have to actively open them. I just prefer to actively open them. Uh, okay, so let's go discard those. And then the finally, probably just our all round general one. Um, probably not gonna go into a great deal about this one for you guys, because it's pretty much standard fare. Probably the one that does come up a lot is going to be to do with this one. So this is to do with the streaming data and the online data and something like that. So, First off, do you want to be connected online or not? You don't have to be. You can completely turn this one off. Um, that's just you just turn it off and you're done. Do you want to stream the high quality um, like photo real imagery? Do you want to stream that or not? Turn it on or off for the photo real 3D buildings. Um, do you want on or off live real world air traffic? On or off live weather, multiplayer, and whether you want to you know, whether you want to uh, connect to any multiplayer services or not. Um, these are all, you can turn these on or off at any time. Uh, this also gives you a chance to actually monitor how much data you've used um, and when it resets. So this is per month and gives you and lets you know what day you want to choose for it to reset. So if you are on a limited bandwidth um, at home and you want to monitor how much you want to have or how much you want to put a data limit on, how much you use per day, you can do that and that's all part of this one as well. Uh, rolling cache as well, so you can actually set to have the rolling cache, so whether or not you, if there's an area that you fly regularly, you know, do you just want to be able to cache that data that you fly in and that's it. So you can set where that location is stored and how many gigabytes that you will allow you up to use. Also your bandwidth usage as well. So that's kind of the important things that I wanted to show off to you guys. Um, the rest is kind of really just generic uh, on you know, generic stuff that we've seen in flight, flight sims all over the place. Um, this is a flight model, so you can change this if you want. I don't understand why you would want to change it, but if you do, you can change it on here. And that's pretty much about it. This is interesting as well. So you can change your avatar of what you want your pilot, your co-pilot to be, and whether you want um, your, your instructor and stuff like that in there. So this is kind of cool. As I said, I'm sort of, uh, it, it'd be, what's going to be cool, uh, what I'd like to see is I'd like to see the ability to add our own custom pilot avatar models in. 
I want to be able to do that. Who knows where to get that? But anyway, there you go. All right. That's a, it's a really short video, this one. I just wanted to wrap you this one up, guys, to show you some of the features that I think are cool um, and, so, and go through some of the points that I think that we as a community have been asking for for a long time in, in some form or another. And it's great to be able to see that developed into the sim. So I really want to share that with you guys. All right, so that wraps up that video. Thank you very much for joining me. Don't forget, as always, to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed this video and this content and want to see more. And of course, as always, you can catch up with me and all the things I'm up to between videos by finding me on Facebook and on Twitter. Just search NoVoing24. All right, folks, thanks very much for watching. Take care, safe skies to all, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.